drive tribe and the smallest cog are uniting for the first time. Predictably, we're starting with something old, cheap, and British. You may have seen it in our Hammond workshop content or even a glimpse of it in the show itself, the Drive Tribe MGZTT. Our plan, to fix and tastefully modify as much as possible on the car in one day. And the list of work is as follows. Putting some upgraded brakes on it so I can take it on track, a new exhaust back box because this one blares and blows on the motorway like nothing else, a new intake system, I'll get to that later, some interior trim that needs fixing, declouding the headlights, and fixing my heater. Neil, what do you think of that list? Is that doable in one day? That is a lot of work to do in one day. What's the trickiest out of all of that? Yeah, all of it, I'd say. The trickiest bit is what you haven't put at the top. What's that? Which is MG, you should have put there, Dear Santa. <laughs> <laughs> have you been a good boy this year? No, I reckon you guys can fly through that. I've I seen you do your stuff in this year. Some of it's easy enough, but we can have a look and see what we can do. What are you doing with the brakes then? Are you just are you putting bigger brakes on it or just... So I took it on track two or three weeks ago and yeah, they weren't up to the job. So I'm no. basically uprating them, vented. It's quite a big old heavy car, isn't it? It's, it is. Yeah. So I think honestly on the road it'll benefit from it. So them, what you're so. saying is you cook the brakes? Yes, wait till <laughs> you see the rears. They are not good. <laughs> yeah, not good, no. No, but we can do that, get the calipers, bigger discs. Yep. Um, intake system material, trim, decline. Yeah, that's, that's, you should better get that done in a day. Strike Unless home. you come across a problem, but there's always some, there's always problems. Nothing never easy, but no, we'd give it a go. Yeah, we get it done. Cool, let's do it. While Anthony's going for the brakes, Neil and I are going to tackle everything under the bonnet. Neil, I did find some fresh spark plugs in my boot, so I thought we'd replace them, but it's not the easiest in this, is it? No. These transverse V6s are pretty tricky, so how do we change the spark plugs on this? It, it's tricky, there's hardly any room. It, you can just about get in there, but what I always do, do the worst ones first. And then it gives you some sort of hope. You could do the front ones quite well, reasonably easy, but the back ones are the rod against the bulkhead, there's no room. But So the V6 is this way, so we've yeah. got one bank here, and then the other bank is yeah. well, he's right in yeah. there. Well, he's there, he's V really like that, so you've got, you've got yeah. three cylinders pointing that way, three that way, and these plugs are right down the back of the inlet manifold. So you're going to have to take off the inlet I'm manifold? I'm hoping or? not. I'm hoping I can just about get in there and get my hands down the back and pull them out. I, I'm hoping not, but you never know, you might have to, depends. Okay, well, good luck, and I'll tackle the intake. We've hit our first snag of the day. I've come to put the intake on, and I did think it looked quite big. If I put this pipe on here, there's simply just not the room for it. So what it looks like is that I've been sent the intake for a K-series car, the four-cylinder ZT, but it does not fit the V6. So never mind, let's just keep it stock. I have got a fresh air filter to put into the standard air box, so I'm just going to rebuild all this. <laughs> Neil, that spark plug change looked a bit tricky. How was it? Well, it's the old, it's, it's nothing ever changed. I've been doing this job all my life and back in the day and you had Triumph Dolomite starter motor bolts, you know, like this with a rubber arm <laughs> and you think things have moved on God knows how many years, it'd be better, but no. Yeah, this is where engineers meet mechanics and yeah. when that's coming down the production line and they're whipping the spark plugs in it and up it goes and bolting in in two seconds, but in the real world, changing those plugs, how long have I been on that? Two hours, probably. It's the exact same as my Mondeo, these transverse V6s. I was worried that the spark plugs that came out of there would have never been changed because of how no. difficult it is, but they looked pretty fresh, didn't they? They've been changed, yeah, but they weren't, these weren't very tight. I can see why they weren't very tight, because you can't hardly yeah. get onto them, but yeah, they've been changed, and somebody else has already had this living horror and, and done the job, but the spark plugs we put in now are better there. Nice, uh, look like iridium tip or mm. platinum, and they're a bit be better plugs. Cool. And it looks like it's been running well, looking at the electrodes and burning the right colour, so... There's no blackness and I didn't put burning any oil or anything. It's been running really well. Well, I'll put the engine cover on to end your misery. Headlights next? Yeah, let it be headlights next. Get that back then. That's one job done. Keep moving on. Tick it off the list. Keep going. Cool. Let's go. Cool. 
Neil is now working his magic with the headlights and they were the thing that both Harry Metcalf and Richard Hammond pointed out as being the worst part of the car. I'm looking at just this cloudy... You need to move to some better condensation. Yes. Neil, I've seen on the internet that you can do this using toothpaste. Oh, I've viewed that, yeah. Is that a load of rubbish or is that... I don't know, I've never legit. tried it, yeah. I don't know, it probably could work, but it's all down to time. And if you're trying to get it done quickly, because all toothpaste is a very light abrasive, which yeah. is what cutting compound is, isn't it? You know, but if you want to sort of get this, it's got years and years, and this laminate has just gone yellow and broken up, and you can see the top surface is cracked and crazed. So what causes them to go that cloudy? It's just the outer surface of the plastic, and, and you get like infrared sunshine, you get heat from the headlights, yeah. you know, when they're turned on, and the, the outer surface of them, actually turns yellow and if you've got road salt and debris it and flies and whatever it and the lights as well and all these things combine just to make their outer surface a bit like a cataract on your eye okay. just goes yellow and horrible and cloudy so what we're going to do is cut that top surface off yep. and then polish that polycarbonate back up and make it clear okay so you've got it all taped up what's the next part Tape, of the, well, the reason i've taped it up because we're going to use a little air buffer and i don't want to you know, rub through the paint around the headlights. We could have taken the front bumper off to get to that to do it. We'd made a bit more room. But with the time we're given, really, we're yeah. up against it. So yeah. we, we can still do, you know, polish our lens, but we don't have to take the bumper off. Okay. Next up was the dashboard, but to get that dismantled, I had to consult the Rover Bible. We're now on to the interior and one thing that I have always wanted to tick off since owning this car, I got home after buying it and I realised, we'll pull out the dash here, there's a bit of black tape over one of the warning lights and I've wondered what the hell it is. Now I could have googled what that was but I knew this shoot was happening so I thought let's wait, let's dismantle the dashboard and then uncover it ourselves. You can tell this has been off the car before because some of the clips have been completely blutered and there's tape holding on the bottom of it. Seems to be a theme going on here. So let's see what it is. Off comes the glass. Just nip in there. There it is. And it is, drum roll please, the airbag light. So what I think has happened is someone at some point has taken a seat out of the car to do something and they've unplugged the airbag cable without disconnecting the battery. A car does not like that and then that will sit flashing at you as you're driving along. So someone's thought, I'm not going to have that, I'm just going to put tape over it. Of course, what they could have done is just reset that and put the seat in properly, but never mind. Nothing too serious, just give that a clean off, get rid of any tape residue and crack on. That was an enormous hassle, but the interior trim is now finished. Before, I had a big hole in my dash, this one here, and I was wondering, what the hell is that? So I got a fresh one, and it turns out, it's a bit rover. Just give me a sec. Come on. Come on. There, there she comes. Gradually. I now have a cup holder so I can sit my Red Bulls in there and drive along. I've always wondered where the cup holders were in this and it was that bloody gap. But now I'm sorted. It's a bit janky, but she's in. 
And today, putting the big brakes on it was one of the main jobs. Looks yep. like you've nailed it. Do you like the new calipers? I love the colour. Matches the car, which is good. Absolutely. Yellow as well, just yeah, breaks it up. Yeah, the sort of contrast with that. And the whole point of me putting these on was I did a track day a couple of weeks ago, and it did okay, but it was a big, heavy beast, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I thought... Take some stop in. But no, now we should stop. Mas the brakes are massive on it now. They are pretty. So enough. if you can't stop now, there's an issue. I hope the wheels go back on those. I've not actually checked that. We haven't checked that yet. That could be worrying, actually. If they don't fit, that's all coming back off. Anyway, they look great. Good job. In the run-up to today's filming, I did do some research on YouTube to find out what this car's Achilles heels are, and there are two of them. One of them is the clutch slave cylinder, but that's way down there, so that's not one for today. But the other is water getting down in the scuttle here, especially getting to the ECU. That can kill a Rover 75 or an MG ZT. Thankfully, we've looked down and there's no water, which is good, but I do live in a very leafy area of London, so Time to hoover that up and then change the cabin filter. Andrew, you've taken on by far the biggest job today. You've absolutely nailed these. Take us through the process of changing them from that kind of nasty, chipped powder coated black to this gleaming white well they weren't actually powder coated somebody been rained them with a matte black rattle can is that right yeah they've been wow. really heavily curbed all around the edges um so we just sanded them back we couldn't do a proper job on them because we haven't had time to take the tires off and whatnot so yeah, yeah. we just had to go with it and sand what we could out literally mass the tires up which is we don't usually do that we usually take the tires off and do it all properly but as we've only got a day but we've done all inside as well so it looks quite clean yeah. right through the wheel so it gives a nice contrast to the caliper too. Yeah, absolutely. With all that British racing green, yellow is, and white, yeah. that looks awesome. I can't believe these are the same alloys, considering how chipped they were. So you've gone yeah. round, right just round the, the edge edges. and sanding them off. Yeah, just sanded all the edges, sanded all the little pits and splits out. I think it transforms the car. And the look I was going for was that sort of 90s British touring car. And I think it looks yeah. perfect. <laughs> There's no point in fixing your car up if it's still caked in dirt at the end of it. So today's sponsor, G Technic, turned up to give the ZT the full winterproofing treatment. First up, things get super soapy with some snow foam using G Technic's W4 Citrus Foam. This pulls debris and dirt up off the surface of the car before a contact wash, lessening the chance of any nasty swirl marks and scratches. Then, to get rid of the nastiest stuck on grime, we up the stakes to the W5 All Purpose Cleaner. While that's doing its thing, some W6 iron and fallout remover is sprayed onto the wheels to search out any metal deposits. Even moving it 20 feet to outside the workshop, some specks of detritus could be found on the newly painted wheels. Then comes the G Wash, banishing all the dirt from the MG's bodywork. And while the car dries, it's the perfect time to apply some C2 liquid crystal. As well as acting as a drying aid, this spray will lead to a longer lasting shine as well as helping repel dirt. Once dirt is on the car, the next time I give it a wash, the grime should simply fall off. And now for the finished product with some need for speed lighting. In just one day, we've turned this 1500 quid MG into something that I think is pretty damn special. That green is now popping thanks to the full G Technic treatment. Anthony's done an awesome job on the brakes. I think that green on the calipers really stands out. Neil polished those front headlights beautifully so there'll be no more nasty comments from Richard Hammond or Harry Metcalf, which is always a good thing. And then my personal favorite is the white wheels. Andrew did a fantastic job. He absolutely nailed the process of changing them from that slightly dodgy black to now this gleaming white. There's two things from our list we didn't manage to do. The exhaust never came and fixing the heater turned out to be a slightly bigger job than we had hoped. 
If you've watched another one of my videos recently, you will know that I'm after a V10 daily driver. And if everything goes well, that will be happening. And that will mean it will replace this. Now, it will be sad to see this leave, but if you do fancy a pretty sorted MG ZTT, do give me a shout on Instagram. DM me, I'm Mike underscore Fernie, and we can have a chat. You're gonna have to rip it away from me, but it will need to go at some point. A massive thank you to the Smallest Cog guys for working on the car, allowing us to come here and also allowing me to get my hands dirty. I've been Mike and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.